Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show increases the live audience of course but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel so please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you have not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate now we are joined by spurs ranty nummy sleeping warrior mark and arwin how are you all doing thank you nathan welcome doing good doing good Okay. I really wish the last 10 minutes had been broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the one that puts the cut in it. I, I, it's either that or deal with me being on camera covered in unused nappies because my kids bought them <laughs> in and chucked them all over me. So I've got to, got to give us some attention. Well, pass it back to Spurs, let him screen share. And well, represent... Before I begin that, before I begin that, uh, I'd like to kick off with um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an expression, you know, truth... Uh, goes in th uh, through three stages, right? So you have to go ridiculed, violently opposed, and then it's self-evident. So uh, for me, uh, I get a lot of the time, why do you, you know, kind of uh, mix with the ballers and take the abuse and uh, go through all that debacle? Because it's an indication of this truth, the stage of truth. Um, so unless I uh, get violently attacked for something which I think is a truth, then it, to me, it can't be the truth uh, because it says all truth, all truth goes through three stages. So unless, you know, like I say, we get the moron, you're a retard, you don't understand without uh, reason. This is just without reason. This is just, you know, just because they, you're going against their truth. Um, there's got to be something in that. Uh, so, yeah, we were just good. Sorry, we're go ahead. We're obviously at the second stage, then, aren't we? We're not being ridiculed anymore. I mean, yeah, there's one or two people that ridicule us, but the vast majority of us are, are violently and vitriolically opposing us. So we're, in my opinion, we're clearly at second stage, and it's not going to take that much more to push it onto the third because it's bloody obvious that the Earth's not a ball. Unless the three stages of truth is just propaganda meant to deceive us, right? Because it's more of a truism than a fact or something, right? Like there's no... This, the, those three stages of truth are not actually necessary in a logical... You know, no, no, but you've just given an example of that because I could either agree or disagree. I could ridicule and say, well, you're a moron. What are you talking about? That doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. And then you, you could explain to me again, but uh, Spurs, this is the truth. And, uh, you know, I would come at you uh, with violence if I really believed you weren't uh, not telling the truth. How dare you assert such nonsense, Spurs? I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you see, right, that's the point, you see. So, uh, Nomi, you're saying you disagree, but you've just demonstrated that truth. No, 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 what I'm saying is because what you said was, well, if I don't get ridiculed, then I don't think it's, then I don't think it's true because of those three rules. But I'm like, mm, those three rules aren't necessarily like an, a measure of anything. It's more of a rule of thumb or a truth. Really? Well, Nomi, I don't, people don't get ridiculed for things that are self-evident, right? So, I mean, I had a discussion with, it's very interesting, I had a discussion with Lewis, yes, uh, Lewis Hackett. And he said what you said. He said, oh, no, no, that can't be the case. I mean, food, you can't, uh, that's the truth, but you can't argue over food. And I said, well, let's say, for example, I, uh, he said to me, you must eat food. And oh, I you... said, and I'm I sorry, said, sorry, sorry. No, it's all right. Sorry, I shouldn't have interrupted. Go on. Well, I'm just saying that he was saying something aligned what Nomi was saying, and he brought up food like it's not a truth. You can't argue over that. And I you know, was saying, well, if I decided to say, well, that's not true, I don't need food to live, and I would ridicule him, argue with him, be violent, and then I would feel hunger, and then it would be self-evident, right? So those things are self-evident um, uh, in terms of, you know, when it comes to truth. <clears throat> that's so not really what I 
That's not really what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is that this idea that the that this th truth has to go through these three stages. Well, give an example. Give an example then. Well, give an example because I'd rather I not. I mean, no offense to you two. I have an this example. Is, I'm just saying that a, that's not a. Like, this isn't necessary. Fact, I'd much rather you just present what this is anyway, far less interesting just, than what you're presenting in the break. You know, what you were presenting in the break was fascinating, um, Spurs. This is just on the side now. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I come across a, a picture. Uh, let me show you, let me present this picture before, you know, I kind of give it uh, any influence. So, you can see my screen. Yep, you're up. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I presented this picture. It's from uh, Metabonk, I believe, and... Uh, uh, certain ballers were curious as to why uh, this black line was where it was. They, they, they were like, well, which flat earther has, has placed this black line above the sun? Well, what is uh, the black line? Well, you know, yeah, well, that's what people were asking. They wanted to know what's going on, what's happening. Why have you uh, drawn a black line there? And I was like, well, <clears throat> yeah, Mick West, Mick West from Metabook, Metabunk, uh, drew this black line uh, indicating this to be the real horizon uh, he's telling us that the sun and everything below this black line is is being loomed loomed up it's not really there uh, and um, uh, it's the trick of the eye so when people are actually seeing sunsets they're not actually seeing the real sun so this would explain it but when I looked at this I thought hmm because my argument was that uh, people would say well why why do things disappear bottom first uh, you know, that's a question people put out there. Is it because of curvature or is it because of something else? Uh, so we can see that if if Mick, horizon, if Mick West is drawing this horizon line here, the real horizon, and everything below this line is, is false, uh, therefore things are disappearing at this point due to atmosphere, uh, not because of this hard line. Um, so which, which kind of supports my argument that if you remove the atmosphere from Earth, you would if you remove the moisture the water molecules you would see for miles and miles uh, why couldn't you could see the stars uh, when it's clear the atmosphere uh, in the sky so-called space is is, is clear uh, it's very sparse and you can see for miles so if you apply that to the earth if you remove the the atmosphere completely there should be no re no obstruction there should be nothing stopping you from seeing anything which and this picture for me uh, kind of clarified that if mick west is because for me this is magnification i believe the sun is really there i'm really looking at the sun i'm really looking at this mountain uh, but they would suggest uh, let's have a look at their explanation i'll just bring up a picture so they're telling us there are two suns uh, the real sun has set and the observers here the real sun has set and the apparent sun uh, is still there in the observer's uh, perspective. He can still see this, but it's not the real sun. Uh, that's how they try to explain it. But uh, and I, two plus I, two is five, I mean, right? Two plus two is weird. five. You it's can like see it, but it's not there. Then. It's just double speak. That's all it is. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. But I mean, this supports my idea, which I've been trying to uh, get out there. But, uh, people keep talking about the horizon. <laughs> like they can explain the horizon this is this is very frustrating i think this needs to come to a close that uh, nobody can discern this horizon nobody knows where the true horizon is uh, we would be arguing all day uh, where is the true horizon mick west would say well the true horizon is above the sun and most people would say the horizon is here and the sun is actually setting here but for mick west and other ballers uh, like the rumpus he would support this argument he'd say well the sun is gone you were yeah, but that doesn't at. make any sense even from their perspective. Because that makes sense from a flat Earth perspective. But if it's all supposed to be looming up to make it look like it's flat, then the actual horizon should be below. I think what they've it's done... It's all they've looming mixed, up. Well, they've mixed the two because we understand that... Yeah, the... but they've reversed it. It's like reverse looming. It doesn't yeah. make any damn sense. Yeah. Spurs, can I just say something? Like, here's a problem with this idea, though, is that... If the sun is magnifying things on the horizon because the atmosphere is thicker at that from that vantage point, right? Well, how come the moon and stars are not similarly magnified? Well, that would be the condition. You'd have to show the photograph, right? It's condition, the conditions everywhere, uh, you know, are different. But this is remember, this is the world record photograph. We don't usually see this far. 
Okay, so things will happen a lot closer uh, when you observe them, like what you see Ranty. Ranty gets different uh, observations at this horizon, but I think we can a, understand sorry, that. that was, between... Sorry, Spurs, to interrupt. That, that was similar. I'm glad that interjection came from um, Nummy because it was a similar, now we're on an almost identical line conversation that was off air, but you gave a completely different response when we were off air, which was to say, well, Rob Skeever has demonstrated atmospheric lensing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's just, he's, uh, I was going to get to that. Uh, he explains this as magnification. So at, at flat earth, as we would say, this is the real sun, but it's being magnified. So what would happen if you removed this layer of atmosphere? You know, I suppose the sun would be uh, smaller. Well, you know, if you remove the atmosphere, you remove the magnification, uh, what are you left with? You would still see the sun if it's in this position, it's being magnified. It's being, uh, you see it larger. So, again, when I saw this, I thought, uh, this is fantastic. This supports my argument, my idea of uh, this, this atmosphere is causing the obstruction and not this actual horizon. So how is it that the atmosphere is magnifying the sun? Because the water, uh, the atmosphere is full of water, moisture, molecules. Um, there's water everywhere. Uh, it, you know, it acts in different ways in different places with temperature, um, giving you different results. Uh, but we know that there's water in the atmosphere. So if there's water in the atmosphere, uh, we can uh, we can put it down to magnification. I, but wouldn't it sometimes? I, I like it. Mean, it gets slightly I, I, bigger. I, I, I okay, like my question. I, Wouldn't you expect that to sometimes well, happen with the moon and the stars if that was possible, right? Like, but it does happen. It does happen with the stars. We've seen star trails uh, come down to this about this line, and they change position. So, what I was trying to point out is this: no me, no me. This is akin to the glass and the, and this pencil in the water. So, you can imagine if this was the glass, yes. Uh, and you put the sun into the glass. Yeah, so the sun could be positioned here. In reality, you put it into the glass beyond this black, uh, black line, and it changes position. Yes, uh, we see this in reality. We can test this. No, but we can test that with, a, with water in a glass, but not with air. There, we can't demonstrate that same effect yes. with air. And, well, you say and air, another point, air. there should be clear uh, displacement. You should see it as it moves, because, yeah. If there is a diff or refraction distortion because of the atmosphere, then it should suddenly change its movement speed. It never really does that. Neither does it when it goes down. Well, the then you put it aside. Remains the I same. Plain truth. I, I just have a bit of a problem comprehending this idea of this mag atmospheric magnification thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just trying to challenge the idea and poke around it a little bit because I think that this, the only context that we see it in is. Well, if we're seeing that is with the sun and never with anything else, right? Yeah, that, that, do you know what, though? I mean, that's the point. I think we're all being confused completely because just because this black line is here doesn't Hello. mean... Hey, Tim. Hello. The black line doesn't uh, make any damn sense. I don't think this... the black line means anything. Well, no, what I'm saying, well, precisely, I'm saying just because this black line is here doesn't mean that this the same thing is not happening here. Yeah? So I'm Just expecting a monocyclist to come... Uh... Well, the magnification is um, is is everywhere, yeah? So, again, this is why I say the horizon is one of the most difficult things to discern. People are showing videos of uh, ships disappearing, uh, ships upside down, ships back to, you know, it's kind of not ridiculous, but we're getting nowhere with the argument because simply because of this. This band, this is a huge band of atmosphere uh, where the sun is not really there. So... No, but it is. You're, you're getting I, your information you from... You don't really know where it is uh, anyway, though. So. I, I just think I, I wouldn't I wouldn't just assume that that uh, that the uh, that this magnification effect is necessarily possible without solid evidence is what I'm saying. Well, well no, of course, yeah. Just a, like the sun does tend to grow a little larger when it, it approaches the horizon, so there may be some magnification going on. Actually, it doesn't that, change in angular size throughout the day, Arwen. Not, it doesn't change in angular speed mostly, but it does seem no, to change. Size. In... Angular size, it doesn't change throughout the day. Really? So that's, uh, that's a visual a psychological effect, you say, that it looks larger? No, you just said it did, and I'm just saying that it doesn't. You can take a solar filter and prove this for yourself. Have you got any evidence to support your position, Tim? 
It could be a psychological. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask him a question there. Have you got any evidence to support your position, Tim? It's psychological. Well, how is it psychological, Erwin? Well, like because the up. eyes change the way you perceive things depending on the position. Things are uh, people are designed to look at the horizon, and it enlarges things in your brain, so it may look larger to you, but it may in actuality be the exact same size. So one of the problems you're having, Tim, with your videos is you're not drawing a black line akin to what Mick West is doing. You're saying this is the hard horizon line. You're not showing. I never said hard horizon once. Well, the problem is, is that now we've moved forward with the understanding that the horizon, not the actual horizon. Things are not disappearing over that actual. In fact, they disappear before they reach the horizon. And you're showing things on the horizon disappearing. Where is your black line? So you're taking information from Mick West and as gospel? Because he also says that the earth is Praise Mick West. No, I don't, I don't even look at his website. One of the time, please. One of the time. time. Mick West has placed a black line. Where is your black line when you show the horizon? Well, why are you comparing me to Mick West? I'm showing that I'm looking over water and there's huge obstruction of buildings that I know are there. So you're saying in your videos, there would be no black line? No, there's all. no black line. I didn't draw an arbitrary black line. No. So you think, that's what I'm asking. I'm just finding out how you, you think Mick West arbitrarily drew a black line. Yes? Yeah, it looks pretty arbitrary to me. I really don't understand what, I haven't looked at what he's saying, but I really don't know what he's saying there. That's really silly. I'll try and give it a brief explanation. So what Miss Mick West is saying is that when you see the sun on the horizon as it sets, there is an illusion because of refraction. In other words, the sun is not in the location that you see it. It is, in fact, behind the uh, curve of the Earth, the so-called curved Earth that we have. So that's what he's saying. He's saying that in terms of where the position of the sun is, this is where the actual horizon in relation to the sun is in this photograph, because the sun isn't there anymore. That's what he's saying. Precisely. And you should know this, Tim. I, I, I can't understand why you're saying you don't understand this. This is your argument. You tell us every day. No, I've this. never made that argument. Don't straw man me. So you disagree with the heliocentric model? And the refraction. What do you mean? No, I disagree oh, with uh, Mick West because he says a lot of things that I can't, disagree can't. with. Praise Mick West. Not, not when it comes to the heliocentric model, Tim. You cannot disagree with him. Everything is concrete. You all agree on the same thing. No. Yes. No, 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 come on. That's, no, it doesn't make any damn sense. The black line above it. No. Hello, guys. Hello. Tim with this, I've had physicists, I've had uh, Paul, um, I've had, they all understand this black line. Tim does not know what he's talking about. So until he can uh, show, uh, you know, a true horizon, then he's presenting in, uh, information that is not true. Yes? No, every I'm actually, other board, every I'm other actually just, that I, have, I have videos that I don't even talk in. It's just like Ranty where he does videos. Mine are a little bit more stable than his, but I'm looking over water at different heights and I'm getting what seems to be curvature, seems hmm. though the water is blocking the buildings. No, that's the optical slant, you know it. Oh, so it's a slant earth. We're back to the slant earth thing. There's an no, easy way an to determine effect, this though, yeah. isn't there? The easy way to determine it is to get it on the adjacent axis. We've been through this on several shows now, so that's the easy way around it. You just show us the same exact curvature that you think you're seeing as you look out into the distance on an adjacent axis. Just go 90 degrees to it and look down it and show us a curve there. Easy. So the question is with the field of view of a human eye or a P900 completely zoomed out, will you get as much uh, distance, so to speak, than you can get from looking at something far away? There's something that's tall, like a mountain that you can see, say, from 100 miles away. Do you get as much uh, resolution in that? I've no idea. What I'm saying is, as you can see on Mark's screen now, you've got a z-axis and an x-axis. And if you stand on the z-axis and look out into the distance, and you presume that the curve of the Earth is blocking your thing at the end of your vision, at the end of your camera lens, then what you need to do to prove that this is curving is go to the opposite axis, 90 degrees, and then showed the same curve when looking down this line. So you'd see the same curve from that axis. That's it. And then that proves that what you I think do is... observations from north, south, east, and west over water. And well, yeah. every single time, mostly well, when I rise that... up, 
I start well, to it, see it, more. If you're proposing that what you're seeing between you and the thing you're observing at the end of the the uh, line that you're looking at is obst obstructed by curvature, then that very same curvature should be visible when looking down 90 degrees adjacent to it. We're at the same place we were when we first mentioned this to Tim. He doesn't understand it. He just said, I've done things from north, east, west, and south. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, for instance, if you are observing east, <clears throat> move 90 degrees and then look south at that same curve. We're not saying take one picture from north and then go to some other location and do an east picture. Okay, we this is this is very simple. Change so your wouldn't position. Wouldn't there be wouldn't there be some kind of a logical necessity that if I do it from all cardinal directions that there is an actual curve? No, it should be curve in all directions, not just that's that's all directions. I just said north, south, east, and west. Now, if you observe the same, uh, the same location, basically, all all, all the angles basically pointing at the same point in your area of observation, you should see the curve in all directions, not just only away from you. Yeah, there should be x-axis curvature. And per Schemo's uh, image seems like that would be the stronger argument you could make from it is the, the lack of x-axis curvature. I mean, the fact that Mick West could draw a straight line across there and that would that would be parallel with the horizon is evidence in and of itself that the earth is flat so i think for this test what, what's what my major hand up here is with you guys is that i can't actually do that and still be looking over water with this observation so i would be on land that was my whole thing land has topography so if we were to go to the ocean say where it's it's ocean all the way around and you know your field of view and you could calculate how much actual curvature is there, then you would see x-axis curvature, mostly if you raise up an altitude. Really? Right. That's so the point. Off you go. Why don't you take a boat and do it with your drone? Yeah, that's it. We're not trying to prove curvature that. here. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's that? We're not trying to prove your argument. We're saying where your argument falls down. So you're now telling us what we should go out and get. Well, you know, if there are limitations to your observation point oh well, that's a shame better luck next time so i i really you know i posted two videos two foot observation 22 foot observation with the p900 looking 26 miles over water okay when i did that uh ranty came back the next day and got the complete complete wrong observation point he got everything wrong i talked to him on my channel you know we we hashed it out like men yeah, but he did and get one thing right, didn't he? The land that the hyena on, was on Anthony, was just the let him get to the end of his sentence. No, hang on. I want to interrupt him. He did get one thing right. The, the, the thing he got right was the land that the hyena was on was the cause of the obstruction that you called curvature. He got that right. So anyway, the, the two-foot observation height could not see that land. And more of the buildings are being cut off. So this is the problem for flat earth. I use the same P900. There's a lot of people that use the P900 that prove the flat earth to most of y'all. And it seems as though there is what we call curvature. You guys call it like atmospheric conditions or like, you know, dirty air or like all different kinds of slants. I mean, whatever, whatever. But the thing is, is I, we get it on video. And also it's like Ranty's videos are always like, he's got like several palsy or something like he, I don't understand why he doesn't use a tripod or if he is like w what's going on there. But the thing is, is also with you, uh, Riley, I would suggest with the P900 to take pictures, not just the videos, because obviously the pictures are going to have much better resolution. So Riley, I would like to ask you why, when you went to debunk Charles that day, did you not take an observation? I did, what Tim. It was in the video. You think... Would you like me... oh, oh, hang on. Oh, oh. I did, Tim. It was... Wait, shut. I don't mind you oh, coming I'll... back to that, but I'm just going to reassert what I've just asserted. So t you've just reass you've just rinse and repeat the exact same thing. So I'm just going to repeat exactly what I've said and make it even clearer. So if you are looking along a stretch of water and you imagine that in the centre of that stretch of water, there is some sort of landmark just for visual 
reference so you can conceptualize it between you and the buildings you claim are obscured by curvature you put a metaphorical non-physical marker right in the center between you and it now you're saying that between you and the thing obstructed there is a curve all you need do to prove that there is a curve is go along 90 degrees adjacent and look at the same point in the center across the x axis and observe the same curve you obscure presupposition comes from simple that's it it's actually not a presupposition because i'm actually making observations so i'm, I'm taking observational facts and no, which your obstruction is the fact that you observe you presuppose that that obstruction that you observe is curvature that is indeed a presupposition until you can prove it. All right, so Ranty, it was from the Antelope Island Causeway. I showed you in when we yeah. were talking exactly I, where it was. Yeah, no, I mean, which town and city is it called? Well, it's looking at Salt Lake City, the actual skyline. Okay. And Antelope Island Causeway, you'll find it. It's pretty easy to find. Yeah, I think we... Um we found your exact location and we, we realized why you weren't seeing any of the, the town itself and you actually saw exactly what you should have seen i was seeing the town what are you talking about i just, I just posted two videos with two from, foot from observation two 22 foot observation and you can see the buildings and they're being cut off by what looks like water timothy is it is it only curvature that's the only explanation as to why you can't see the lower part of those buildings no i'm saying this is this is decent just for say a person that does quote unquote believe in a sphere along with many other inferences like the, the celestial well the sphere. many other inferences you're ignoring the main one on the x-axis or uh, z -axis. oh my lord hang on hang on hang on hang on you, listen you, you're running away from it you guys are you're obsessed running away from it and you're not answering you know, the question i've been talking about this for years the x-axis the difference between dig seeing out google earth and what seeing... showed me sorry Rancy, dig out Google Earth. Show us, show Tim what you showed me with regard to the land that the hyena was on and its relevant height relative to the background that you were looking at. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just finding it. Because I've Tim got a new hard drive in, so all my data was lost. Um, no, it's to... not lost. But so, so Tim, let me, let Nathan, could you share my screen, please? Yeah, sure. Tim, you made a claim that I, um, why did I not do an observation when I debunked flat Earth math? Yes. Yes, I asked that question. Right. Was the answer, claim is actually yeah. a question. The the answer to your question, the answer to your statement is, well, there is the observation that you claim I didn't do, and I said in the video, clear as day, that it wasn't clear enough to see anything. So although the weather was nice, the the, the visibility was shit. So, did I make an observation or did I not? Well, matching the observation that you had on the ground, no. Right, I explained. But you did have a shaky camera in your in your hand. I will give you that. Right, but I looked to the horizon, and we got it on double speed, and that is the, that is the visibility. You can only just about make out like the silhouette of the Isle of Man, and your statement was that I didn't make an observation. Yet now you have it on screen, and I'm showing that it's not clear enough to make any observation. So I did make an observation. It was just a negative. It didn't work because I couldn't see. And that's at about what ten feet off the water. Whatever, who cares? Can't see far enough for it to make an observation, and you said I didn't make the, one. The point, the point is, is that we we go back, and I do this personally. I think Ranty does it as well. He tries to replicate what he did before to to compare the results. So what you've done here is basically stand up and have a shaky camera on where you can't see the Isle of Man. So I was just asking if you got it. So from what the what value what value would the be if i had steady hand at this occasion for an island that you can't really see that was besides the point but i no, agree it's not. It's exactly you the point you can't see obviously you can't see the isle of man there i agree with you tim i've got the steadiest hand and i get the i get more criticism of my handiwork on the with the camera than what ranty does and let's be honest ranty looks like he's got epilepsy mine's steady as hell and i still get criticized so why is it you're criticizing you, me on an observation that's got zero the difference of mine though? Like, do you see the difference in how steady my camera is? Yeah, but okay, you weren't well, you weren't using full digital zoom. I was, and I was lay on my belly. How, how much? Why do you use digital zoom? To to make it seeable because it's thirty four miles away and it's only a hundred feet worth of land. 
two hundred feet's worth of land. It's Mine's small. Twenty six miles away, and no, I can it's still. 34. You don't need to use digital zoom. No, you need to loop. Yeah, you need to be able to see it. Otherwise, people like Sly Sparkane claim that they can't see it. Do you understand well, that Sly, perspective? Sly Sparkane, I've never heard you really address this, but you had these observations from like what was it? It was supposedly like thirty five feet, and then it turned out to be like one hundred and twenty or whatever. So why is there such a difference in the observation from near the, the ground level and That's up that the high? Point, Tim. There is the same observation and the same results are yielded. Why is that? Wait, Can you tell it's, me? it's a different observation, first of all. The and only the, difference and is the they're height. not the same result. They are the same. They're exactly the same. Would you like me to go through it and show you just for you? Would you present so when he makes a graphic, when he makes a graphic of both of those um, those you're observations on that you've done there's not more land being seen yeah. on the higher one no there's the same yeah. land scene he's lying about the risen horizon that isn't actually rising he's showing you what you want that he wants you to see and he's not showing you what what you should be seeing which is all of the evidence in the one are go. you gaslighting me i can i can go look at the the 50 shows we did on isle of man and then look at your observation with it which is still a video on your channel and compare them myself i don't need slice sparkane there's an obvious I can, difference. I can, I can do it for you right now if it's a distraction that Nathan's happy with, given that Rancy's just about to show you that the hyenas was the obstruction. It depends on which way you want to go. Do you want to get dicked by Rancy with the hyenas, or do you want to get dicked by me with the Isle of Man? Which one do you want, Tim? Why do you put it in, that, in such terms? Because you're going to get dicked. Pick which way do you want to die. I, I don't understand the animosity here. I'm I'm here just chatting. I'll with stop you complaining guys. about uh, his handiwork. Then. You're arguing from a position of um, um, ignorance, and you're pretending that there's something in it. And I'm ready to destroy you whichever way you want. But I'm giving Rancy. I'm giving you the choice to pick. Do you want Rancy to destroy you, or do, would you like me to destroy you? Pick. This is a quite a distraction I'm gonna, here. I'm going to jump so, in here real so, quick because Tim. So you're saying Tim, you're saying that the you're... observation height was different, but you got the same result. You're saying that it's the exact same result. You can see the same amount of land. Is that what you're exactly, saying? Exactly the same. Yes. So back to my question: Would you like me to destroy you, or would you like Rancy to destroy you? I, I find the question silly. Um, there was somebody well, trying to jump Ranty's in. Go ahead, dude. I, I already yeah, know what's I, coming, I was... so. I'd rather just see Ranty because he's up on screen and I like these hyenas or prairie dogs or whatever they are. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tim, this is where you said you took your image from. I think you, you'll know that's the causeway over here. If I just log, I'll just uh, get rid of this, actually. Because we worked it out eventually. You showed me where you were. You were kind enough to do that. This was the bridge. Would you say, which is the exact part on this bridge where you did the filming from? I think, I think you're really, you're close enough for sure. That's pretty close. The one that I was showing you is, is about there, yeah. Yeah, okay. So in a direct line across to here, for instance, uh, where we've got the other side of the, the lake, because this is the lake, isn't it? And then we have a direct line into the Capitol building. If I do an elevation profile on this, on this line of sight, what we see is that it's level the entire way across the water for 25 kilometers, it stays the same height above sea level, doesn't change at all. Then when we hit the land, the land stays exactly the same, pretty much all the way up to 42 kilometers, where it rises in total 21 meters at 41 miles, uh, sorry, 41 kilometers. So is that, do you think that sort of compliant with the ball model or more of a a flat earth proof yeah absolutely I, I think i tried to explain to you what level is on a sphere yeah and uh, what water is level water is level on a sphere absolutely but when you that what you actually filmed the was the capitol building just up here so it's on a hill right at the very end there's a hill and your capitol building was up there you saw all of it from this distance and then on you the, on the two the... foot, let me make a correction. On the two foot observation, you could only see the top of the building. And on the 22 foot, you could see um, basically all of it. Yep. Yeah. So from 22 feet, you was able to see 43.3 kilometers all the way down to the hill, to the to the driveway, and everything on the building, and essentially everything else that's on the lower part, you wouldn't be able to expect to see that naturally because it's all completely flat. The first mound or something that came in the way perhaps here perhaps this little hill 
would have blocked out everything else from your view, apart from the Capitol building, which is exactly what you showed on your image. Okay, the, the major point here is that I'm at a 22 foot observation height. Yeah. Okay, and I can't yeah. see, you can see the drive, but you can't see, first of all, all of the uh, Salt Lake City buildings, even at 22 foot. Yeah, but that's not the, the biggest, de that's not the biggest deal. The bigger issue is what, what that land that the hyenas sat. Talk about Indeed. that land, Ranty. So we're, we're looking here for the hyenas. The hyena is sat at 23.4 miles away, 23.4 kilometers away on the other side of the lake here in the direct line into the Capitol building. That's where it would be here. So if that's the case then, and it's level, I mean, there's only a two meter rise here. How come you were seeing it from 22 feet? Yeah, and why wasn't the it? hyena behind the curve of the earth? Exactly. So the hyena, so to speak, was behind the curve of the earth at <laughs> two foot, at two foot. But at 22 feet, it's a completely higher altitude, different observation. Well, let me just uh, and you could the, see it. Yeah, but the, we haven't uh, seen the evidence that he was missing, have we? We've only seen the evidence where he was. I okay. show, I just posted, you can look in the chat. There's two links. Uh, one's the two foot with a P900 and one's a 22 foot with the P900. You can look at them yourself and try to debunk them or whatever. It's just an observation. 27 kilometers from an elevation of 22 feet. Oh, so there you go. That 16 miles is just another curve soundly number, right? Yeah, but that's where the hyenas were at 16.7 miles away or 27 kilometers. The viewer height was 22 feet. Hidden should have been 81 feet. Even with refracted hidden, it should have been a, a five-story building hidden. But you were seeing the hyenas on the on the sands. Well done, Arwen. No problem. Tim. Yeah, I was wondering what you talking to Arwen about. Um... It's just the way it is. After you get, you know, that's where it was. You were at twenty-two feet. The distance was sixteen point seven miles to the hyenas, and essentially. 81 feet should be hidden. Okay. How are you kind of getting away with the hyena? Well, truthfully, this this all kind of is, is hilarious, first of all, because obviously we're oh, using satellite I data. Oh, you're okay. Just, well, I want to be able to answer. His question. answer this question. First of all, he's using data from satellites of a sphere, sphere Earth. Obfuscation. Okay. To debunk, Answer the to question. Debunk, to debunk my observation. Why can the sat so, Why can it be seen? I don't know if he's got the right point. First of all, well, I'm not um, trying to debunk you. I'm only just trying to talk it through with you. We've seen hyenas. You've shown. You've, you've you've pretty much told me that's your exact spot on the on the on the Salt Lake, which means that the only land that would be the first set of land would be here so you've pretty much told me where you're going to be seeing the hyenas from i'm only working well, from the evidence you've given to me i would say go in about half as much is that not land right there as well that i'd be looking over so halfway you want to go halfway let's do no 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 half half where you think that the land starts from your line from well, yeah. you know, no, keep going up. This way. Right Look, the problem the problem with this is, first of all, is that the Salt Lake uh, is the the tide and um, it, it really varies. So like I don't know when this picture was taken by Google Earth, the satellite that's up in the sky. So sometimes there's more water. I've even seen it, and sometimes there's much less. So I don't I don't know where the land actually is. The major overarching point here is the actual observation of the buildings being cut off by water. No, it isn't. He's just asked you quite specifically about something totally different, which is these hyenas that well you can done. see, even Thank though you. they should be well behind the curve of the well, earth if you presuppose an, a curved earth. But now you're just rinsing and repeating for the third time that the what curve am I you claim I that obscures the buildings is in yeah, any way proof of curvature without going and getting the same thing on the x-axis. Now, I've moved past that. You've rinsed and repeated that twice now, and now you're just obfuscating Ranty's question. Why do you keep saying, why do you keep saying rinse and repeat? Because Look, that's I... what you're doing. You spew out something. We give our objections. 
I just saying that something is obstructed does not prove curvature. You need to go onto the other axis. And you just keep saying the buildings are obstructed over and over again. Rinse and repeat. Ranty's trying to address a new issue with these prairie dogs. Or hey, yeah, but you're saying I'm rinse and repeating, but while I'm trying to answer him, and then you go on no, about the x-axis. The question was about hyenas. Your yeah, you're talking about buildings. So that's rinsing and repeat. What you came in originally and asserted, which is curve, which it isn't, obscures the buildings. Well, now we're on to something else. We've addressed that. Get us x-axis curvature with that observation, and we might okay, consider guy. it to be curve. Okay, yeah, 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 I got it. Right, so yeah, cool. that's it. Simple as that. Just get us x-axis curvature on the same same exact observation, and we might consider it to be curve if we can analyse it and see the same curve. Now we're on to something different. Yeah, and you just brought up something that we were talking about 15 minutes ago, saying I'm rinsing and repeating. I don't yeah. Know. No, 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 hang on. Let's stay on track. Your claim was that the bottoms of the buildings was obstructed, and I said Ranty did get something right, and that was identifying the obstruction, which was the land that the hyena was stood on. That's the obstruction because it's a little bit taller. And he's asked you, where is the hyena? And you haven't answered him yet. So can we answer the question? Uh, no, I can't answer that question because what I will have to do basically is go back to the drone footage and see where that land actually starts. Because obviously with the elevation, I'll be able to see if this is a good representation of the actual observation. Like I said, the water level you could uh, show dries that up. Would you like to show uh, that? I could, but my virtual cam, I just uh, got a new SSD, so my virtual cam on my OBS isn't, well, actually, I can share a screen. Okay, cool. Never mind. Let's see. Uh, well, just so you know, I'll be stepping out now anyway, but uh, yeah, I'm glad that you came in to have a chat. And I've changed my name. It's Ranty Flat Earth now. So I, I thought that was a troll in the chat. That's actually you. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> Nice. Good chatting with you, buddy. Okay. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go over this a little bit more because it, it does need a uh, flat Earth discerning eye to look at, not somebody that's just being vitriolic to be vitriolic like uh, our friend Riley here. Well, I'm just waiting for my gap to come back to you on the your claim that um with the land and slice bar cane. So if Ranty's stepping out, hey, let's hello. deal with that. Said you. Hey, hello. Hey. Hello. Hey. Good, good to have you. So okay, we got a full panel. No more trolling. So the other claim that was made, made Tim, you said that the uh, land that I produced from the beach was the same land that was produced from the top, and you were questioning how credible that cl that my claim was. Is that correct? So let's get this straight, because I know how you love to twist and contort things. What I'm saying is, the higher observation point, you could see more land than the lower observation point. Is this? That's is this and what my, you're going to refute? Uh, correct. My position is that the okay. higher observation light height, we see the same land. Exactly. The exact same land. Exactly. Now, let's oh. define terms here before you try to pull this show with me. So okay. you're saying you're saying that you can see the exact amount of land, not the exact land as in like you can see the Isle of Man, but you can see the exact amount of land from the very low observation point as opposed to your quote unquote 35 feet observation point. Exactly. So Okay. So we got that. My, can, can you see cool. my screen? Let me uh Yep, now I can. So we have North Barul, which is the, one of the highest mountains. We've got uh, Snaefell, it's in the clouds, North Barul, and that appears at the very beginning of the video. You can see that the land all tapers down to a point where it disappears into the water and then there's a gap. And then on the other side of the gap, we see the floaty land, and the land sits at around about 300 feet. It should be 700 feet behind the curve of the, geomet the geometric curvature of the Earth, right, without the refraction. 700 feet below the horizon. This is from the beach, right? This this composite was taken from the, the high point, but the challenge was to go back and repeat. Where's the, the water? The challenge was to the, the black line. The black horizon line is the water. So the claim was by Sly and Mark Taylor and a few others to go back and do the same observation, but do it from the beach. So I did. That was me too. Okay, so you're one of the yeah. ones. Yep. So look at the contour. Look at how it tapers off to a point, and then it, look, it tapers off to a point, 
Then there's a gap, and then we have the floaty land. And the challenge was to get the floaty land on the right-hand side from the beach. So it should be behind the curve of the Earth by 700 feet. And then you can argue about refraction, okay? This is the actual video. So you'll see right at the very start, this is the beginning of the video. I don't identify it initially in my head. I don't recognize it because it's, it's squashed. So I look for the beginning where the land appears to taper off, which is here, but I don't recognize it. So I then move back to find North Barule, which is there. Once recognized where I am, I then go back down and I start looking for the land dropping off. And then I find that the land stops. Now, the, the claim is this bit, because the gap in the water, this, what you're looking at now is supposed to be here. But the floaty land at 300 feet should be way behind the curve of the earth. So I'm looking for the floaty land, lay on the belly, on my belly, on the beach. I'm oh, yeah, and if I may interrupt for a moment, that's a pretty damn steady hand for such footage. Yeah, thank you, Arvin. <coughs> so look, there's the land. So I spot the land. I zoom in on digital zoom so it can be seen. Sly can't see this, but everybody else accepts I can, it. I can see that. I can yeah. see that. Sly can't. Sly pretends he can't see it, and he wants me to point it out to him, and I refuse to do it because he's, he's trolling me. But the land is there. Now, the problem is that land should be 700 feet behind the curve, and there should be a wall of water at 190 feet or whatever it is in front of me. So the challenge was completed by getting this footage. So your question was, mm. am I representing the land correctly or not? And the answer is, yes, we see the same land that I saw from the top of the hill at the bottom when I'm laying on the beach. And same I'm land. Okay, now we're getting semantical about this. So you see the same amount of land, correct? No, we're seeing the same land, Tim. This, oh, this land. so now, see, this is why I had preambles to talking with you, dude. Now, now you're pulling this lawyer attorney crap, dude. Sorry, did you say semantics? Can you tell us again about how level on a sphere is level? Yeah, basically you can go into Photoshop, yeah, draw that was just a, a sphere joke. by holding shift, and then draw a bigger sphere by holding shift, and then put that over it, and that would be level. What? what? Right, that, that's that is presupposing a sphere. Actually. Right, that question. Oh my God, presupposing. Uh, I'm so sorry I brought that but word. How does together. holding shift so and making sad. a bigger? Wait, how does holding it shift makes a perfect circle in Photoshop? Make a lot. Make a, a, a sphere. It makes a perfect circle. Yeah, but how does that level? He asked you about the about the definition of level. Is level flat to you, Nami? Yeah. Yeah, the synonyms. You look it up in the dictionary. That's how it's described. It says flat. Yep. Can you get that uh, while I pull up my video with the drone? Can you um, get that for me? That I feel definition? some points been lost here, though, Tim. Can we just no, conclude? My no. point? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's actually get back to that. Actually, so yeah, let's conclude this, and then we can move on. The same amount of land. Is that what you're still trying to say? Yeah, do you understand that if we live in a sphere, the land on the right-hand side... No, 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 no. You see the same amount of land, Riley? Do you see the same Yeah, we see the same land. It's been squashed because of the... No, not the same land. The same amount of land. Yeah, the horizon hasn't risen. Okay, so you see the same amount of land. Stop being all bureaucratic with me. I'm just asking you. Yes, we see the same amount of land. It's been converged because we live on a flat plane. Oh, so there's oh, so you don't actually observe the same amount of land, Riley. So the question that you're asking is, has the horizon risen? No. Nope. Right? No. Nope. Then the land nope. that we are seeing the same amount of land that's been converged because of the effects of perspective. If oh, it was so so no. So you have an ad hoc reasoning to try to get yourself out of this. This is why no. I, I why I was very strict with you. You're, you're totally wrong. You don't see the same amount of land. It's very right, clear. Let's, let, let's do it again. Share screens because obviously one of us is not understanding how perspective works. And I'll, I'll suggest. No, that. perspective has nothing to do with it. You said that you said that you'd see the same amount of land from a lower vantage point. You don't. You don't see the same amount of land. Someone's sniping, I think. Yeah, it looks like it. Hmm, bummer. That's a bit of a shame. On the other hand, we've got to about 50 minutes into the show, so I may as well round out here. I don't mind rounding out 10 minutes early if somebody in some asshole in the audience decided to obfuscate this point on Tim's behalf. Could I start another hangout? I suppose I could just bring Anthony back in on Skype. That might be the most logical thing to do. 
I know, we've lost absolutely everybody, <laughs> so maybe not. <laughs> Just show that. But yeah, everybody except me has gone because I can't be sniped. So yeah, I think that might be my opportunity to round out. Just set, press a few buttons first. Bear with me. And with that, I'm going to say, first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for joining and making this debate possible. If you hated the show, you know what to do. But if you liked it, consider sharing it with a friend, maybe subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!